What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day with your boy Mariani here. Hello. Playing the 1-3 uh, today in the live stream. 1k max to start right now, mm -hmm. then uh, match the stack. So maybe stacks will get pretty big in this 1-3 game. You know, it's Texas. It's never really 1-3. Gonna try to get some straddles, have our buddy Lorenzo that's gonna be playing the game. So apparently he'll be good for the action and fun for the vlog. So we'll try to mix in some spots with this guy. You guys wanted to see us battle it out. So at the 1-3 streets for now, we'll see. <laughs> how it goes, how often we get involved, but we'll try to do some punts. that will be fun too, but... By the um, time they see this, they'll already know what happened. But... We don't know they, yet. You guys know, you know? But if you saw it live, you know what happened. They would. Right. But maybe they didn't see it live. That's true. All right. Think about that. That's, yeah, that's you a good You know, point. sometimes. If you're not watching this live, good for you probably. <laughs> Thank you. You're watching this, you're watching this maybe a month or two late. Yeah. We're finally here. We're making this video. Hopefully enjoy it. See some 1-3 punts. Let's get into it. Starting off this live stream here, we're playing 1-3, but it's not your typical 1-3 with 1,000 max to start. Then it's match the stack afterwards, so stacks are going to get pretty deep. On top of that, we've been on the road for about two months now, and it just looks like I am in desperate need of a haircut. Looking pretty rough here, but anyways, I digress. One of the very first hands, it's a crazy one. There is a under the unstraddle, Lorenzo does it. And you know, like I said, it's not your typical 1-3 because he straddles to $100. What a legend. So effectively with a thousand in front, we're playing 10 big blinds deep and action folds to me. I'm in tournament mode right after a month of tournaments and we look down at queen nine of hearts in the hijack. And I guess according to all the tournaments I've been playing, in the hijack, playing 10 bigs effective, we rip it all in. I jam because that's what I think I'm supposed to. I think about it for a while, and it's not an easy jam because it's a thousand dollars of actual money, not just chips, but we go for it. Action folds Lorenzo, and before he makes the call, you can see, he talks about how the last time he blind raised to $100, he had pocket queens. Well, we run into aces. I don't think he's folding this one for about $460. Absolute legend to straddle to $100, then pick up aces. We're pretty much going to lose this one, right? Page wants a slow peel here. King, king, eight. We're drawing dead on the turn, and there it is. First hand in, minus 450. Let's try to battle back. In the next spot shortly after that hand, picking up ace, 10 of diamonds in middle position, I raise it up to $10, then we get three bet by the cutoff player to $40. Action ensues here. People don't really fold much. The small blind, big blind, make the call. And I think our hand is playable enough for sure. We're not going anywhere for $30 more. I make the call as well. So four ways off to a flop of 10, nine, five. And when the small blind checks, big blind actually donks out $50. Facing a pretty small bet on a fairly connected board with a ton of draws. I don't really see him playing two pair like this. I think two pair plus or stronger holdings would want to go for a check raise. So it seems more likely of some sort of draw or top pair, and we have the best top pair. I don't want to give other players behind a good price to draw whatever they may have, so definitely time to raise it up with top pair. I size up for a raise to $225. Action folds back to the big blind player, and he decides on making the call. When the big line makes the call here, looking at a turn, trying to fade some clubs predominantly, but who knew I needed to fade any queen, jack, king, or eight as well. It's pretty much a flip at this point, but when the turn comes, the three of hearts, absolute total blank, which is really nice. He checks to me, and I think about jamming with how little this player has behind compared to the size of the paw right now, but ultimately I did decide on a smaller sizing to 275, he folds rather quickly face up his queen jack open ender and we'll take it down. About an hour and a half later that hand, we pick up queen jack of spades ourselves. We're in the small blind. There is a plus two player who opens it up to $26, then action onto Lorenzo who is trying to play 100% of hands. So he makes the call, of course. The button calls as well and now onto me. I really don't like calling and playing this hand multi-way out of position. So I decided to three bet this one and we raise it up to a sizable amount to this one three game to $150. To my surprise, the plus two player who raised pre, he folds. So I thought he had the strongest hand possible, but now we get action as Lorenzo and the button make the call. So 
Let's go out of position to a flop against two players that are playing a lot of hands. Flop comes queen, six, three, two diamond and a spade. We've got top pair, and given the stack sizes of both opponents, we're pretty much forced to cut my stack to this pot with top pair, and no matter what the hell happens. We also have backdoor spades to fall back on, but I start off with a bet of $150 again. It's about one third the size of the pots. We get Lorenzo to make the call. And now onto the button player, Slops. He also calls as well, leaving a relatively small amount behind. So we've got both players in. We're just trying to get the rest of the stacks in on the turn as well. When the turn comes, the deuce of diamonds. The flush draw gets there, not necessarily loving this spot, but we've got top pair. Both players seem to like to call a lot, so whatever. If we're beat, we're beat. I rip it all in. It's about $200 effective, and both make the call for fun. So here we are. You can almost hear me announce that I have a queen, and to my surprise, they both actually say my hand is good. So let's see a river and hope to fade another diamond. When the river comes, the king of clubs, we hold show my hand and we scoop. Nice to get value from second pair and third pair on the flop. So clearly as you can see, this 1-3 game isn't playing like a typical 1-3 at your local casino. Everything's just bigger in Texas and this one is no different. With pocket queens in plus two, there is an ungun player who limps for $3. Now the player on my right raises to 20. Picking up pocket queens, like I said, in Texas, things are always bigger. So I size up a little bit larger to for a raise to $75. And are you surprised when you think $75 isn't big enough? Action Central player to my left makes the call. Mariano seems to like his holdings and makes the call. Then the cutoff makes the call. Small blind calls. Plus one player makes the call. And why don't we just invite anyone else to the lodge to just toss in 75 bucks and pick up two napkins or two random cards from a deck as well? Because casually, we're playing a six-way three-bet pot. Only in Texas, baby. Let's go to a flop. Gonna have to navigate this one. When the flop comes, 935 rainbow action checks to me on our overpair and on this board it looks relatively clean but you just never know when we're up against five other players so got to be a little cautious i throw out a bet of 175 dollars a little bit on the smaller end just to see what develops behind us we get two customers out of the other five players the cutoff and small blind both make the call so it's nice to thin out the field a little bit and we're going three ways to a turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. So not great. Really hate this one as it's pretty easy for either of these players to have a nine in their hand, just calling with top pair. And that obviously beats us now. So when the small mind checks to me, I am just going to slow down and check this one. Action checks around as the cutoff checks back. So nice to see some passive action. We're off to a river. The river is a nine amazing because we went from being really cautious in the turn to knowing we pretty much have the best hand unless we're somehow up against quads so once again lorenzo checks to me and i think about my decision points for a while now obviously we're going to be betting and now it's just a question of how much i weigh out all of my options and then magically after thinking about it some more a voice in my head said to try out an overbet so we go for it. 1.5x the size of the pot about. I throw out 15 black chips in there for a $1,500 bet. It's a large one. Onto the cutoff player who thinks about it for a long, long time. He tanks and ends up folding. Now onto the small blind player who once again goes really deep into the tank. You can see what he has. He has a three. He's got a full house. And now I just really don't know what to do when he's thinking for so long. I'm just staring at the flop, trying to put on my best poker face and not get distracted by any of the antics. Ultimately, after a deep and long, hard tank, Lorenzo makes the call. We show the pocket queens, they're the goods, and we get pushed a massive pot for this game our way. It was probably one of the biggest pots of the night. And I saw a lot of the comments from the live stream, people thinking, wow, really great overbet. And honestly, it wasn't some sort of well thought out process or plan of overbetting the pot. 
just kind of clicking buttons and I clicked the overbet button and luckily it worked. In this next spot, we're in the straddle under the gun and it's about an hour after that last hand. I've been a little quiet, haven't played too many hands, so let's mix it up with King-5 off suit. There's a plus three player, TJ raises it up to $25. Obviously, Lorenzo's gonna be in here as he's trying to play every single hand dealt. Button calls, big blind calls, and why not see a flop with the good old King Fiver? We make the call as well. Can't knit it up all the time. Let's go to a flop of Queen 99 Rainbow. We've got absolutely nothing here, but action just checks around. So we'll see a turn, which is the 10 of spades. Brings in a gutter, and given the passive action, potentially some opportunities to bluff as well. So I check when action checks and checks around to Lorenzo again, and this time he doesn't check it back. He bets at $100 and action folds to me. I'm not 100% sure how strong of a hand he may be holding right now, get from my point of view, as he checked through on the flop with all of that action and so many different players. So holding a king, definitely key for us to bluff at this. I'm not gonna call, not gonna fold. We put in a check raise and we size to $300. Action folds around to him, and you can see his cards on screen. I wish I did. Holding trips here, trying to bluff that out is a little ambitious, but he does make the call for 300 total. Let's improve on the river. The river is the seven of hearts, and we brick it out. We've got king high, and we're not going to slow down here. We haven't really bluffed much at all this session, so let's try to get this one through, which is ambitious. As you can see, he has a nine for trips. I bet out $500, hoping to fold all one pair or queen X. And now Lorenzo thinks about it for a while again. And surprisingly, he looks really unhappy about the situation. You can see him kind of agonize over the spot. But ultimately, he does do something. He doesn't fold. And he actually doesn't call either. He ends up raising to 1,000 total. And with king high in a dream, not going to Hollywood or pretend like I have a hand snap it off and fold. Looking back, obviously now I'm a little surprised to see he had a nine, but nice hand. Unfortunate that he was that strong. In the next interesting spot with that failed bluff attempt here with pocket tens, Lorenzo makes the call in a straddled pot for $6. Next to act puts in a raise and it's a pretty big one to $50. Now to my right, the cutoff rips his whole stack in there. It's $185 total and with all this action onto us on the button with pocket tens, I'm pretty split between raising or just calling here. And I think I make my decision based off of the position that I'm in. It's much easier to make the call on the button and see what develops and play this hand with not a super bloated up pot in position. So I just do that. I make the call for 185 total. And when I call, we get Lorenzo and Jables to make the call as well. So once again, multi-way four ways into this three bet pot with one player all in let's go to the flop Ooh, ooh, quadrophenia oh. for rampage yeah the flop looks pretty good not gonna lie to you two tens and i have two tens in my hand that makes it two pair two pairs for quads uh -huh. Pretty solid. Action checks to me, and with a pretty dry side pot, I think I can definitely start with a bet sometimes, but obviously it's pretty tough to have our opponents have a much of anything on this board. So I decided to just check this back, potentially let other holdings improve with draws or pairs or whatever. So we're off to see a turn, which is the deuce of spades. Looking like a pretty good turn for us as we can get some action, and even better, Jables puts out a bet of $300. Onto me, and I think definitely a call or raise is in order. And I think about it for a while, and especially with Lorenzo behind, I kind of want to incentivize him to come along as well. But also raising makes a lot of sense if he has like the ace or king of spades. Not going to fold for a small raise given him betting out $300 already. On screen, it's obviously pretty easy to see as a flush, but in my head, I know calling just isn't the wrong play. So... I'm gonna be passive once again, just make the call and see if Lorenzo can come along as well. We know we're obviously never losing this hand. Lorenzo ends up folding, so we're going three ways to a river. The river is the five of spades, so all things considered pretty good. If this player has the ace of spades, we're getting stacks committed regardless, but it seems less likely when Jables checks to me, and he's got about $1,000 left in his stack, and I decided to just go for all of it. I jam, it's about two thirds the size of the pots. And when I rip it all in, he 
doesn't look happy, which I don't love as I want to see him snap call with like the ace of spades. That would have been a pretty dream scenario. But ultimately, it's king queen of spades face up. Pretty surprised to see it and obviously kicking myself for not raising on the turn. But I'm praying he ultimately makes the call and after a while, ultimately does make the call, flicks in the chip there, and we get paid again with another monster holding. Looks like this luck box shirt works, guys. Grab one to get quads your next session, guaranteed, or your money back. Just kidding. I can't actually guarantee that. But you know what? There's a chance you might. So luck box shirt, got to praise that. Thank you for quads. After luck boxing our way to flopping quads, we pick up three, four of spades under the gun, and we're on the straddle. There's a hijack raise to $50, the cutoff button, big blind, all make the calls. So for only a little bit more, we're gonna call. It's always fun to mix it up with these low cards here. So another multi-way pot brewing, which comes nine, five deuce rainbow. Not a spade on the flop, which is unfortunate, but still we're open-ended. When action checks to the button player, Mike, who throws out a bet of 180. The big blind now makes the call. He just sat in on this table and I don't feel like calling to play this hand out of position. And on a board texture that is as dry as this, the main strong hands that they can have are sets or just one pair essentially. So we can apply a lot of pressure to pretty much one pair holdings now and on later streets. So I go for it. I check raise to $650. Luckily, everyone folds quickly as they really didn't connect too hardly with this board and we get this bluff through. So smooth sailings here at the end of the stream. So this is when the stream ends. We ended up ending up on the stream around $4,000 or $4,500. And when the stream ends, we end up playing 2-5. So got a few hands for after the stream for you guys. Bonus time here. In this hand, we pick up pocket jacks in the low jack and I raise it up to $20. We get the Mariano in the cutoff to 3 bet us to 60 Action folds to me and finally get to play a significant or decent sized pot against our buddy Mariano. Wanted to do that on stream, but no opportunities occurred. We'll do it here. We can decide to either four bet or call. Out of position, I decided to just make the call. Going to a flop of queen four three, two clubs. We've got second pair on this board. I check and he bets out $40. I'd expect him to do that with pretty much all of his holdings on this kind of board. And for 40, we're going to defend and see a turn. When the turn comes, the seven of clubs, I check once again. Not great to see the club draw get there. And now he sizes up to a sizing of 250. Oh, well, seems a little bit of an unfortunate spot to be in. It's really large and I definitely debate between calling or just letting my cards go here but I defend and make the call. Certainly not comfortable with the situation and the strength of our hand, but you never know. Let's see a river. When the river is the king of diamonds, ah, I'm totally checked out of this hand now. It's way too much beats me. I check, he throws out another bet. It's a big one of $800. Can't do anything but fold, so nice hand, buddy. After the session ended, he later told me he had the nuts. It looked like he turned the nut flush, I guess. So we could have definitely gotten away in the turn and saved more money, but it is what it is. We'll move on. Hand after that, pocket queens in the small blinds. There's a $20 straddle out there as well. So always nice to improve from jacks to queens in this hand. There's a cutoff player who limps and a button raised to $100. Yeah, this is not your typical 2-5 either. Uh, onto me, and we're definitely gonna put in the three bets. So I'm gonna size up to $400 out of position. And now next to act in the big blind, he puts in the four bets, four bets to $1,000 and action folds to me. Really unfortunate spots. This is also a vlog watcher named Dennis. So big shout out to you. It was nice playing with you this whole night. And I haven't seen him play too many hands, but our hand is just a little too strong to fold. So he rips it all in. It's $600 more and I don't love calling cold four bets, but our hand is just too strong. I go for it, toss in some chips for a call, and he shows us pocket kings. So not looking good for us. We've got a 20% chance to win this hand. We're off to a run out. Had eight, nine, 12.
Renault comes and we're unimproved, unfortunately. We pay him his exact amount of his stack, which comes out to $1,111, one, 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 getting whacked off stream, but nice hand, Dennis. You deserve that one. All right, wrapping up the session in bed. Uh, we're sharing a room, sharing the bed, of course, with uh, our buddy, our, <laughs> my poker boyfriend. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyways, we ended the session. Um, Fuck! Pretty <laughs> Anyways, we uh, ended up the session pretty well, I think. We both did pretty well. We played for like four and a half hours, five hours, give or take, something like that, for the stream. Unfortunately, I did get spanked around right after the stream ended, like right off the bat. Uh, I think after the stream ended, I was up like 4,500. End of the day, we are in for 3,000, out for around 5,500, so good profit of 2,500. Mariano, how'd you do here? I'm on 2K. Good. Sweet. Well, you already saw his video, I'm sure, because this one's coming out uh, a little too late. But, oh uh, yeah, hands are great, quads are cool. Uh, oh, that was sick. Yeah, quads were really cool. That's good to hit, good to win a big pot from it. But thanks so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you made it this far at the end, and I'll see you guys next time. We do have the 510 stream. Yeah. Mm. No puns, hopefully. <laughs> we'll find out.